I'm delighted to be joined by Liz Kendall, the Shadow Work and Pension Secretary and Labour MP for Leicester West. Hello, lovely to see you. Thanks nice for coming on. Too. First time on the show, I think. So, That's so, right. so lovely to have you here. Can we talk about a story on the front page of the Sunday Telegraph, which suggests that the first private school has closed because of the VAT raid that's being pledged by Labour. Uh, so this is a Catholic school, Alton School in Hampshire, that's closed down. So are Labour happy about the idea of their policies, even before they've been enacted, closing schools down? I want to see all children have the best start in life. Let's just take a step back from this. Uh, I don't know the details of that case and the finances of the school and what's really happened. Mm. But I do know that children in all schools deserve to have the teachers that they need uh, and the curriculum and subjects they need to get the best possible education. Mm. And that we're saying, you know, we will end the tax breaks that private schools have to put the money into our state schools to recruit those six and a half thousand new teachers in mm. key subjects to give children a better start. And I've, I don't know what's happened on the finances. OK, there could be other reasons school. for it. But we know we anecdotally have... that there are a lot of parents who are really worried that they won't be able to afford the fees come September. Obviously, a July the 4th election does focus the mind somewhat for parents. We've got the Institute for Fiscal Studies, so an independent body not the people involved in independent schools, but the IFS predicting that 40,000 private school pupils mm -hmm. could have to leave the private sector and go into the state sector. I've had so many shadow ministers in this studio and down the line, and I've asked them this repeatedly. What will you do with those private school pupils? Where will you educate them in the state sector when you're already saying that it's overstretched, that class mm. sizes are too big? How will you accommodate these pupils? Well, if we look at what's happened over recent years, schools have put their fees up for many different reasons. We haven't seen that sort of exodus that you're talking about. This is an IFS prediction. It's not about. my own one. We've, so. had, we've had other people make predictions that actually this money can be raised and it wouldn't necessarily have that impact. Mm. But our priority has got to be the, the children right across the country, including my constituency, who need those teachers, who need those changes in the I get that, schools. but can we just answer this central question? Let's be really conservative about the IFS's estimate of 40,000. Let's say it's a quarter. It's an exodus of 10,000 private school pupils into the state sector. Genuinely, Shadow Minister, mm -hmm. where will you accommodate them? Please answer the question because it's, parents are watching this really concerned about the fate of their children. I know, uh, can I just say, I do know, of course... All parents, whatever, wherever their children go to school, are concerned about their children's future. Uh, I don't believe that those are the figures that we'll see. Say if they are. I, but I don't. Politicians don't deal in. Well, let's put it this way. Commit, let's put it this way. Let's put it this schools. way. There is no way on earth that no children are going to be leaving private schools if 20% extra in some cases has been put on the fees. You know as well as I do, because we're from the same neck of the woods and we, we, we're from an area of Hertfordshire which has got a really good consortium of schools which are part selective. You mm -hmm. went to one, Watford Grammar. I send my son to one. I send him to a state school. Watford, I've got two girls in a private school. I, went, yeah, but... I know what private school parents mm -hmm. are like. Yeah, there are the Eatons and the Marlborough Colleges of this world where everyone's driving around in a Porsche. OK, we've got parents at my daughter's school, which is, mm -hmm. which is a independent school where the parents, they're both working. I've spoken to mum saying, I don't know if we can afford this. So and a conservative estimate. Let me be even more generous than the IFS, which is a body the Labour Party loves to depend on when it's critical of the government's spending plans. Let's say 5000 private school pupils have to leave their schools. What are Labour going to do with those pupils? Where are they going to be educated come September? We don't believe that that scale of figures is, is what's going to happen. We're going round in circles our, here. Pri our priority has got to be those children uh, right across the country who need. Surely but, your I priority what... should be all children. It absolutely is. But it we isn't have, private school pupils to, who might have nowhere to go in have September. To take, we have to take decisions in tough financial circumstances about how we're going to get the funding that we need to give all children that better so start So at the moment, Labour doesn't have our, a plan for accommodating that private that, school I pupils don't believe in that, the public sector. I don't believe, you will know, there are many different views about what will happen, uh, what, about what will happen and the impact it will have. I believe it is a strong policy that will increase but standards right across the country. this isn't convincing to parents. Parents are watching this going, what 
I can't afford the fees. Where many, is my child going to go to school in September? Many, and we can't even answer but, that. But there are also many parents across the country, including in my own constituency, where the schools are crumbling, where they cannot recruit Absolutely. the teachers that they need. And, and, and they thank deserve, goodness for the private sector. And that they that deserve, the private sector and its pupils aren't putting extra pressure on those crumbling better, schools. They deserve a better chance. And, um, you know, I came into politics to make sure that your chance of fulfilling your potential and living your hopes and dreams doesn't depend on where you're born, what your parents did, what their income is, your gender or the colour of your skin, that every child deserves mm. a good start of life. And that's why we're saying we want to have those breakfast clubs in every primary school. Yeah. We want to recruit the extra teachers into our state school yeah. because we have... Even we though have you're saying that state schools are crumbling under financial pressures. Yes, we need to get extra funding and resources into that, and that's how we're we going to support Should we talk about tuition it? fees quickly as well? Mm -hmm. Because we had Keir Starmer pledging to scrap them. We've mm -hmm. had some talk from Angela Rayner that they should be reduced, and now Bridget Phillipson, the woman who wants to be the next Education Secretary, is saying they might actually go up. Which yeah. is it? We want a fair system of funding in our universities. I'm sure you'll hear more about that in the coming weeks. But the key here is, how do you give all children the skills and opportunities they need for the future. And money is tight. I mean, one of the other things that you will often and rightly ask us, how are you going to fund things? You can't make promises. Mm. Yeah, how you will you? Will keep. you put tax up? Because Darren Jones um, has said that you, you, you probably will. He hasn't ruled out tax cuts. So in order to fund all of these big spending pledges with not much money in the coffers, as you keep on repeatedly well, pointing out, aren't you going to just have to put up taxes or is it borrowing well, will we, go up? Well, we have said where we'll we'll put up taxes. We have said that... So we you're will, definitely going to put up taxes? We will scrap the non-DOM okay. tax status. Yeah, but, but we'll put income but this, tax and, and, is, and national we have, insurance. We have no plans to be increasing uh, income how tax. How do you pay I for want, everything, then? I want taxes... I'll tell you how we'll pay for it. We'll pay for 40,000 extra appointments in the NHS every week by closing tax loopholes and the loopholes in the non-DOM tax status. Mm. We'll pay for 6,500 extra teachers in our state schools by ending the breaks for private schools. We will pay for the increase in mental health staff we need by reducing those tax loopholes mm. that private equity fund managers... When will we, we have, have actually... We have, so abolished. you asked me a question, Camilla. I have said where we will increase taxes. Those are our priorities. The other thing I would say to you is reform. I don't believe the answer always comes in more money. No. And I think you can make better use of So the will you reform the NHS then so Abs that it uses its money more effectively? Absolutely. And let me give you a really clear e e example of that. You know, currently we have so many elderly people stuck in hospital beds when they could be cared for in the community and at mm. home. But a so social we need, care plan's going to cost a lot, isn't we, it? But the first thing that you can do is bring together the teams. Because it, I don't know if you've... Hopefully you haven't had to deal with an elderly parent stuck in hospital. You are on that phone, mm. ringing around yeah. five, six, seven, eight people, trying to get it all... Con yeah. There's one person, there should be one team. That's the sort of reform we need there. And I think... You can make better use of taxpayers' okay. money. We have seen, let me just say this as well. We have seen I just to £10, billion pounds about £10 billion pounds last year in yes. the benefit system waste on fraud. We've seen £15 billion pounds in defence procurement wasted. We want to use people's money wisely, and that's what Labour's committed to doing. Quick question. Will you abolish the House of Lords in the first year that you're in office? You will, you will see, I'm sure you'll be eagerly awaiting mm, our uh, manifesto commitments, uh, and that will be coming out in the coming weeks and months. And will we'll the manifesto also say how much it's going to cost to decarbonise the power grid in six years' time? Well, it'll have a very clear commitment about clean oh. power by 2030. And it'll have a cost And it will, that, have a, will it? it will have anything that we put forward will be fully funded and fully costed because it's not our money, it's, the, it's taxpayers' okay. money and we will use that wisely. Liz